Hey guys, um, another more along the lines of a beginner lesson, sort of. Um, I still hear folks that have been believers for a long time not fully understand this particular. This is actually two topics in one, but they kind of lace into each other, so I figured I'd cover them both. Uh, one is a lot quicker, so uh, this is going to be about the threefold nature of death, apart from God, of course, and the proto-evangelum, and a little bit of the difference between, well, the main difference between what a believer uh, experiences as far as death and then the third death which we technically don't uh, ever see so let's get into it there's three different uh, natures if you will of death that occurred after the fall of Adam and Eve uh, the first one is a positional death it's the same thing as your parents saying you're dead to me uh, and then completely ignoring you and not letting them or letting you rather be a part of their life um, for life that would be a positional death um, then of course there's the physical death the body ceases to function in the world that I mean we see that all the time, uh, attrition. We naturally age, our bodies break down as we age. You know, we can get into the science of it all, but really it's that our bodies essentially have an expiration date and uh, it's all up to the Lord and its timing is 100% uh, preordained by him. Um, and then three, of course, the eternal death. This is the one that believers don't see. Um, the final punishment for separation from God eternally, uh, also called the second death, but we'll get into that. So humans were not originally created for death. Um, but God allowed for the possibility of it to honor his image, free will. So in other words, um, Adam and Eve were basically set up for life. They didn't have to, you know, toil or struggle. Uh, they were they were put in a position where essentially as long as they didn't eat from the tree, they would continue on even in their relatively weak state compared to the current, the, the, the soon to be eternal state for those of us that are resurrected. We see that in Genesis 2.17. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat for in the day that you eat it, you will surely die. Now, um, you know, that that was that was essentially the beginning with the positional death and then working its way to physical death. And then eventually uh, the third death, if you I'm sorry, the second death, the third uh, type of death, if you will. Um, that would be the end result if you never found the Lord, never accepted his sacrifice and uh, just kind of went on through your life doing whatever you do, whether a nice guy, a mean guy, an evil guy, you know, all of those things without the Lord lead to the pit. So Satan, not desiring to see the family of God reconstructed, and in, in my opinion, and I think the opinion of many, not to be replaced as well, uh, he chose to tempt Eve, and thus Adam knowing full well her weakness in knowledge, and Adam's weakness for her, you know, because that's his wife. And well, you guys saw the picture, I, I think he showed up and she was in a in a sad state he just wanted to make her happy and uh, he was clearly willing to throw it all away for his love um, Genesis 3 4 but the serpent said to the woman you will surely not die and and then obviously this is playing on the fact that you know he wouldn't see an immediate death but Satan was also judged as well so it's not like um, it's not like he was completely incorrect just like everything he does it always has a little kernel of truth in it you know no she didn't immediately fall over dead but uh, she was positionally dead and on her way to the uh, the lake of fire if if the Lord didn't do something um, because of God's perfect character after the fall they became dead to him positionally thus divorcing themselves from his presence and their potentially eternal state in the Garden of Eden because had Satan left them alone would they have ever sinned would they have uh, not just filled up the family of God and that would have been it and there wouldn't have been any of this 7,000 years of evil nonsense where we're tempted by Satan and our own sin uh, Romans 5 12 therefore just as sin came into world to the world through one man and death through sin so death spread to all men because all sinned also Genesis 3 4 and this is where we get the picture of uh, of them basically being kicked out and not allowed back into that position of eternal life after he drove the man out he placed on the east side of the garden of, of Eden, a cherubim and a flaming sword. So the, 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 the fancy angel, the, the highest ranking of angels, see my video on the, uh, the, the, the ranking and organization of holy angels, if you want more info on that. So the, the cherubim and the flaming sword flashing back and forth to guard the way to the tree of life. So they got a vivid picture, if ever they were to go out that way towards Eden to see, you know, where them or their, you know, their parents or grandparents, however many generations had passed, to see what they gave up. So everybody was constantly reminded, by the way, there was never a time uh, during the pre-flood era where they didn't know uh, about what happened to their forefather. Now, in the position of positional death uh, to God because of sin, all men are slated to have this body die physically, physical death, 
as a secondary result. So positionally death, positional death, and then slated for physical death. Uh, Hebrews 9.27, and just as it is appointed for man to die once, and after that comes judgment. Uh, Ecclesiastes 9.2, everyone will die someday. Death comes to the godly and sinful people alike. It comes to good and bad people alike. It comes to the clean and the unclean alike. Those who offer sacrifices and don't, those who don't offer sacrifices also die. A good person dies and so does a sinner. Those who make promises die and so are those who are afraid to make them. So there, there's no distinction. Uh, because of Adam and Eve's actions, death comes to us all one way or the other. And if a human ever never accepts the Lord as their Savior via Roman, or I'm sorry, Revelation 2.11, Romans 5.10, there are more verses than that. Those are just two, two big ones that are easy to understand. They are slaves to sin via Romans 6.20, per Romans 6.20, and eternal death in the lake of fire awaits them, also called the second death or eternal death, uh, Revelation 21.8. But as for the cowardly, the faithless, that's the big one, the faithless, the detestable, uh, as for murderers, the sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, their, their portion will be the lake of fire that burns with fire and sulfur, uh, which is the second death. Straightforward. The ultimate consequence, aside from Christ, is universal damnation. Blessedly, those of us who humble ourselves by accepting the Lord and his sacrifice are not hurt by the second death. Revelation 2.11 He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The one who conquers, in other words, makes it all the way to the end in faith, will not be hurt by the second death. It's a non it's a non issue. John three eighteen, whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe in him is condemned already, because we're all slated for it. Because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. The name of the only Son of God is the salvation of God, Christ. But remember, we as believers are so set apart, made holy, that God doesn't even consider our physical death as death at all. He calls it sleep. Uh, John eleven eleven through fourteen, the, the story of Lazarus. He said and after that, he said to them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go so that I may waken him out of sleep. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. Now Jesus had spoken of his death, but they thought he was speaking of literal sleep. 1 Corinthians fifteen twenty. But now Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who are asleep. Uh, 1 Corinthians fifteen six. Also 1 Thessalonians four thirteen. Acts 7, 16, and so on and so on and so on. There's, there's so many different uh, examples. We don't need to go too far into that. So for those of us in faith already, there is nothing to worry about as far as the eternal death and the second death, the lake of fire, is concerned. As the Lord is the answer and was promised to all uh, way back to just after Adam and Eve were ejected from the garden. This is called the proto-evangelism, the pre-gospel, if you will. And the meaning behind all legitimate sacrifice uh, to God before Christ came as in his own personal sacrifice. So... Um, the, the, the conversation between Cain and the Lord about doing what is right when he brought the vegetables, when his brother was busy sacrificing animals, showing that his brother accepted that the Lord had to basically kill something very much innocent in our stead. Uh, and he did so by giving up the best of his flock, whereas Cain could care less because he just wanted to live his life and keep the meat for himself, basically. This was a clear picture to Adam and Eve and their progeny that we just discussed that God was the one who would save them from ultimate death and eternal separation, the lake of fire, and also the basis for pre-Israelite Gentile believers to show their faith in the true God. So the line from Adam to Noah, then believers like Job, Abraham, Lot, and so on, they didn't have the law. You know, they didn't have the prophets just yet, although there were prophets at that time, obviously. So I'm, I'm sure somebody like Enoch was prophesying like crazy, and, and Noah, of course, too. Um, but this shows that Never once has there ever been a time in history where people didn't actually understand God's plan for salvation. They didn't see it, you know, they, they saw they saw a reflection of it or a shadow, if you will, like it's described many times throughout the New Testament. Um, but they always understood that God was going to do it because he was the one that covered Adam and Eve with the skins before they were completely ejected away from the garden. So he was the one who went and killed innocent animals and covered them. That picture was clear as day. And uh, never was there ever a time in any part of history where somebody could not find the Lord or understand his salvation. There are many today that claim that because somebody has never heard the words Jesus Christ, that they somehow are unfairly being judged. But the truth of the matter is, from the beginning all the way through, and we're talking all countries, all nations, all peoples, have always had this understanding, at least the basis of it, as a potential to look and see what it was God was planning to do as far as saving man, and that, that he had ever promised it literally since the beginning. 
I hope you guys found this useful. It's just some basic information, but it kind of breaks down, again, the nature of death and uh, how it applies to us and, and what was really meant when the Lord was saying, you shall surely die because we all surely die. And if we don't have the Lord, we will eternally and completely die separated from him burning in hell. But thankfully, that doesn't apply to believers. So those of you watching this that are in faith, excellent, good job. Those of you who are not, um, I advise you give them a chance because what's the worst that could happen? Bless you guys. Uh, I love you dearly. I hope you're having a good day. Let me know what you think. Like, comment, share, subscribe, notification bell, all that stuff. Uh, I'm seeing people drop off and then come back on. I'm sure YouTube's up to their normal games. Um, but I hope you're having a good day. We'll talk to you soon.